Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Christian Lehman Church. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. My name is Caitlin, and I'm on staff here at CLC, and I just want to say welcome. Uh, we are so excited that you decided to join us this morning for service. Um, I can just imagine all of your smiling, beautiful, excited faces to worship this morning. And I know some of you probably just got up out of bed maybe like five minutes ago. That is okay. Splash some water on your face, grab your coffee, um, and come and join us because we're, we're ready to worship as a, as a church family. It's crazy to think that we've been doing online services for over a year now. Um, but praise God for giving us the technology, you know, to be able to continue worshiping together um, from all different places in the midst of a pandemic. I know that um, I've experienced this myself and I'm sure you have too, but sometimes being online and virtual for everything, it just, it drains you, you know, it takes a toll on you. And, and my hope and my prayer is that um, church has not become like that for you. And I know it may have, um, but I, I, I hope that when you come and you join us on Sunday mornings, um, you would be able to be fully present. Um, I, I hope that you would be able to come as you are and to take all the heaviness from the week and to bring it to the Lord. Um, I hope that church would not be become something that, you know, you, you just are waiting for the hour to pass and you can pause it and, and replay it later or maybe never. Um, but I, I, I hope that this time would continue to be um, a joyful moment for you because um, it's definitely still a joy for all of us here. Um, I hope that today as you worship with us, as you um, dive into God's word with us, that um, you would be re rejuvenated, um, refreshed, um, that you would come and see um, the body of Christ and God's word as a source of love. Not something that drains you, not something that, that tires you out, but really just gives you so much life. Um, because our God is alive. And we just celebrated that, that last weekend that, that Jesus is alive. And that makes all the difference. And so we're going to worship this morning. Um, we're going to read his word. We're going to learn together as a, a church community and invite you to be present. I invite you to be open to um, receiving what God has for you this morning. Uh, but I'm going to pray us on in and uh, I invite you to just pray with me. And um, if you're not in that place, that's okay. Ask the Lord to help you get there. Lord God, we we are so grateful um, for you. We great, we're grateful that you are um, a God who is compassionate and kind and gracious and loving. Um, that you uh, are not distant from your people, but you are very close, Lord. That you see us in our circumstances, in our pain, and you suffer with us. You walk with us. You prepare the way for us. You're fighting for us, Lord. That's the type of God that we serve. That's the God that we're worshiping. We thank you for being that God, Lord. We thank you that when everything around us is so crazy and we definitely can't control those things, we know that you are constant. You are faithful. You are good. You are never changing, Lord. Your character remains the same. And we can... Look to what you did on that cross and remain hopeful and confident and secure in what we know of who you are. We thank you for that, Lord. I pray for my brothers and sisters out there who are tuning in this morning. I pray, Lord, that you would be um, meeting them in their homes, that they would feel your presence this morning. Um, they would feel you close, Lord, whatever they're walking through. May the Holy Spirit be ministering to them in this place. We love you so much, Lord, and we uh, pray that you be glorified with our with our praise this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Let's worship. <clears throat> fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love
ask that the Holy Spirit would fill us up this morning. I can feel. I can feel you flowing through me. Holy Spirit, come and fill me up. Come and fill me up. Love and mercy. Senses, I am thirsty. Your presence, Lord, come and fill me up, Lord. Lord, let your mercy wash away all of my sins. God, we just want more of your presence. Uh, we want you. We need you. We can't do this life without you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, so much for your amazing love that never leaves, 
that never runs dry, that never changes depending on how we feel or the circumstances around us, Lord. That love is constant. And we look to the cross and we see why. We pray, Lord, um, we pray, Lord, that you would be speaking to us this morning. Wherever we're at, whatever we're bringing um, to your feet this morning, I pray that we would just feel you close. Um, we need you, Lord. Can't say that enough. We thank you for being a God who um, draws near to us, who sees us, who suffers with, and who ultimately brings us the hope that we can't find anywhere else in this world. We thank you. We thank you for that, Lord. We ask that you would be glorified in this place. Um, we thank you, and we just pray that you would be um, speaking through Pastor Calvin, speaking through this message, and anyone who needs to hear it, um, would you be moving? We love you, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, now I'd like to hand it over to Denny for announcements and community life. Great. Thank you so much, Caitlin. Good morning, CLC. Reporting to you live from aisle two of Safeway. Um, this is your community life uh, segment. Hope everyone is doing well, keeping safe, and enjoying the beautiful sunshine. Um, simply put, the mission statement here at CLC and also in this uh, grocery store aisle is to make disciples who love God, love people, and who seek to serve the world. One way that we seek to do that, and you know, we do it every week, is we'd love to connect with you. Um, if this is your first time tuning in, um, we'd love to get to know you and your family. Uh, we have so many amazing um, families and, and home groups and um, just different activities and programs here at CLC where we just love to get to know you, um, to love on you and your family. Um, and we're so glad that you're tuning in this morning. Um, if you've been with, uh, if this is your first time, um, definitely reach out at www.christianlayman.org forward slash contact to get more information or email us at info at christianlayman.org and we'll get back to you ASAP. If you have been with us here before, um, you know that I love giving out the question of the week. In fact, it is my jam, uh, pun intended. Um, and so the question this week um, is, you know, this week I was having a peanut butter and jelly or peanut butter and jam sandwich. And in the comment section, do you guys call it jam or jelly? I know it's trivial, but I'm just like pretty curious. And that was what popped in my mind this week. Um, so in the comment section, jam or jelly. Um, so this upcoming Saturday, um, our long awaited all church retreat is will be taking place over Zoom. Um, It'll be a great time with a lot of different uh, seminars and just uh, our very own um, members of our church community who will be putting on different workshops. And, you know, we have a cooking class with Gemma and Isabella, which will be a ton of fun. We have uh, college planning with the pun master general himself, Rick Kwan. Uh, we have um, a cooking class with Auntie Teacher Lynn and much, much more. Um, we're still trying to get a head count for how many people will be joining us this upcoming Saturday. So definitely make sure to check out your e-news, click on that picture, that link, and uh, help our staff out with a little head count. Uh, for our college students, it is that time of the month. And so this upcoming Sunday, um, tune in for a virtual Holy Chow brought to you by DoorDash or any other delivery ser uh, service that you use. It's be a great time to catch up, um, to just really touch base and you know, I know that as the semester is winding down, um, definitely, you know, opportunities to pray for you and to really just come alongside you as your church family. Uh, so definitely make sure to check that out, save your receipts, and um, email those on over um, after the event to caitlin at Um, And so with that, um, I will be wrapping up this week's announcements. Um, but before we um, hop off, I put in a little special request with uh, my good old friend, Michael Bay. We have a little video uh, presentation for you. Uh, we've put in a, a ton of hours and it may look a little familiar. Um, if your hearing is too good, please turn up your volume as this will be a slightly quiet video um, or not. Uh, if you're wearing headphones, uh, 
please do not hate me after this. Uh, please enjoy. Have a great week, everyone. And I'll see you here same time, same place next week. Take care. to a theater near you. Well, good morning, everyone. Hope you are all well. We just celebrated Easter last Sunday, which for the church is a high point of the Christian calendar year. You would think we would uh, still have that afterglow from celebrating what our Lord Jesus did for our sake. But are we actually feeling more joy after Easter? Has the busyness and the struggles of life already overtaken us? Imagine how the original disciples back in the day were feeling that morning after the resurrection of Jesus. Their beloved leader was executed on the cross. And three days later, they discovered the tomb was empty. The disciples might have been thinking, did our Lord really get resurrected as he promised? And if he did, so what's the difference now? The authorities that persecuted Jesus would now turn their attention to Jesus' followers. Panic was likely spreading among the disciples, who were thinking the same horrific torture and execution that Jesus experienced was going to be their fate too. You can understand their anxiety and fear. We are finishing up a sermon series on what it means to follow Jesus in the Bay Area, where we learned that following Jesus should make a difference in our lives, that we would think and act alternatively from how the world tells us to. And next week, we will begin a new series based on the book of Ephesians, which we named A Whole New World, because the author, the Apostle Paul, over and over again reminded the young church that Jesus came to earth to change the world's old way to a new way. Those of us in the Bay Area who are Christians are not immune from what's going on around us in the world. The happenings of the world are very powerful and affect us physically, emotionally, and likely spiritually. With the year-long COVID pandemic causing job loss, parents to de facto homeschooling, loved ones dying isolated and separated from family, social distancing and disconnectedness has taken its toll. The list goes on. The political division in our country, the contentious election last November, the insurrection at the national capital in January, ongoing racial tension with the backdrop of Black Lives Matter protests and the current George Floyd trial case, where we all we watched a handcuffed black man die under the knee of a white police officer. With continued gun violence, mass shootings, including the recent tragedy in Atlanta, combined with the already rising incidents of anti-Asian hate violence that seems to have a new, co new case reported daily of an Asian elder being blindsided or an Asian woman getting her purse snatched. Many of us are feeling numb and to be honest, traumatized over and over again. We all have been profoundly impacted by our times. Life is already tough enough. Add trauma causing events on top of normal life troubles, the anxiety level gets amplified. There's a saying that speaks cynically to the bleakness of man's life. 
Life is hard, then you die. A surgeon friend of mine shared with me that the reason he retired was because his work was killing him. The stress had a domino effect. He was not physically or emotionally or spiritually well and was not having any joy in his life. Even when he went on vacations, the night before the time off would end, the thought of returning to treat patients the next morning caused him to have anxiety attacks. I kind of know from my own experience as a dentist and pastor how it seems to seemingly be on call 24-7. Imagine getting pinged or called for an emergency at all hours. And I mean all hours. My friend, for his own and family's sake, decided to hang it up. And even then, it took him six months to detox for him to feel any semblance of normal again. When you are so wound up, you lose track of what healthy feels like. But here's the kicker. My friend, a doctor, said he was like suffering from PTSD, something we associate with people coming out of war zones. A light bulb went off in my head. Wow. I realize we all might be feeling PTSD based on the conversations I have been having in my circles. Which makes sense when my African American friends are telling me that the current George Floyd court trial is re-traumatizing for them. The attacks by the legal defense on Mr. Floyd's character and lifestyle as the reason for his death rather than an officer's knee on his neck triggered traumatic flashbacks of historical and personal experiences of racism. Recently, a black pastor told some of us that being on constant alert for generations whenever in public for their own safety from violent racism and microaggressions takes a toll on our African-American brothers and sisters' health and well-being. In a similar fashion, Asian Americans now taste this bitter reality with the uptick of Asian hate crimes causing many in our community to be anxious and fearful, even paranoid when on the streets, having to constantly look over their shoulders. If not just for their own sake, they increase concern for our vulnerable seniors who have been specifically targeted. Many adult children are advising their elderly parents to not venture out from the safety of their homes. Every reported home invasion, store robbery, mugging, shooting, stabbing, assault, provokes personal flashbacks of trauma. That is plain wrong to live in constant fear. So what's the fallout from this trauma and worry? Well, many are expressing depression, sleepless nights, eating disorders, increased anxiety and panic attacks, hyper alertness for safety. People are feeling stressed out and no peace. And this is from firsthand stories from our own congregation. All of this and more happen to be signs of PTSD. Post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD can develop after very stressful, frightening or distressing events, like the examples I mentioned earlier, or after a prolonged traumatic experience like a pandemic. So what to do? Why would God Let this happen to us. Well, Jesus is always someone we should look to for care in such situations. And and Jesus did just that after Resurrection Sunday when he appeared to his disciples who were anxious and likely were feeling PTSD themselves post-resurrection. So let's turn together to the Bible to see what God has to say to us in his word. Reading from John um, Chapter 20, verses 19 to 23, starting with verse 19. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. 
If you for, withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. This is the word of the Lord. From this passage, when you have been traumatized, first find safe place to heal. The scripture tells us the disciples locked themselves in the upper room where a few days earlier they had a private dinner with Jesus before he was arrested. Verse 19 says, On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Scripture here refers to on the evening of that day. So what day is this first talking about? Today we would say Monday is our first day of the week. But the first day in Jewish culture is actually Sunday because Saturday is their Sabbath. And can you remember what happened on that particular Sunday morning in Scripture? Mary Magdalene found the tomb was empty when she went to check early that morning. Jesus was resurrected that Sunday, which is good news. But here in this passage, the disciples did not appear to be celebrating Jesus' victory over death but were huddling in a locked room in fear of the Jews who were searching for Jesus' followers. The doors being locked means for me that the disciples found a safe place away from trauma. And they did not hide alone, but in the company of each other. Which is good advice if you've ever been traumatized. First, find a safe place. And when ready, to not be alone, but seek trusted community with others for mutual support like the disciples. And I don't want us to miss this important detail in this passage. We often tell people that Jesus invites us to come to him. But here, when the disciples were hurting, in fear, anxious, Jesus went supernaturally through the locked solid doors to appear in front of them. Jesus came to them in their time of need. When two or more are gathered in his name, Jesus will show up. And when he showed up, what did Jesus say to the disciples? Peace be with you. Matter of fact, for emphasis, just in case the disciples did not hear him the first time, he told them a second time in verse 21. Jesus brings peace, a peace that the world cannot give, which is the antidote for trauma. After finding a safe place to begin healing with Jesus' peace, the next step is to not deny or overlook trauma, but to accept that trauma changes your life forever. Returning to a pre-trauma normal is not possible. Even Jesus showed his scars to the disciples. Jesus was himself traumatized when he was tortured and crucified. Having experienced trauma, Jesus knows our trauma. He can relate and has compassion for us. Verse 20 says, When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Often this this phrase, show them his hands and his side, is interpreted to mean that Jesus was proving to the disciples that he was their Lord that the wounds were evidence of him being nailed on the cross. But for me, it means more, that when we as humans experience trauma, the wounds do not go away. Even if we heal, there will be scars. Even though Jesus was resurrected on this side of heaven, he still had the wounds. Trauma changes your life forever, and embracing this fact brings an understanding that gives peace. And as the scripture describes, the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord with his wounds. As one wise counselor told me about grieving, grieving does not go away. Doesn't get better, just becomes different. And the same applies to trauma. You won't ever be the same person. A Christian vocal group, Point of Grace, has a song entitled, Heal the Wounds, which has powerful lyrics that speak of God's purpose for our scars. Goes like this. Heal the wound, but leave the scar. A reminder of how merciful you are. 
I am broken, torn apart. Take the pieces of this heart and heal the wound but leave the scar. Don't let me forget everything you've done for me. Heal the wound but leave the scar. As Christians, we have an opportunity for a life-changing experience after trauma that can be redeemed by God. So, have you ever experienced trauma? I have. It's just a part of daily living in a not-so-perfect, cruel world. I, I grew up in San Francisco, and this past week, I went back with my wife, Terry, into the city for a day trip. And we walked around one of our favorite places, and that being Golden Gate Park, which was full of color with the cherry blossom trees in bloom. But this park was also a traumatic place for me in my past. Years ago, I was napping on a blanket on a grassy field in Golden Gate Park, and I was just soaking up the sun when all of a sudden I felt water spraying on my face. I thought the sprinklers just turned on. And when I opened my eyes, I was horrified to see a dog urinating over me. I was so angry because that's what's worse than, than being spit on is being peed on. I searched for the dog owner and saw him nearby and I let him have it for allowing his dog to do that to me and not calling his dog off. You would think he would apologize at least, but no, he just walked away. He just walked away from me with a smirk on his face. That dog owner happened to be white. I was so upset for being demeaned and humiliated. Let me refresh your memory of the historical context. That was in the spring of 1982. Not a coincidence that it was the same year that a Chinese American named Vincent Chin was murdered in Detroit by a white father and his son, both auto workers who thought he was Japanese. They blamed Vincent Chin for the huge layoffs at American automakers due to the competition from the successful Japanese auto industry. Our nation was having a rise in Asian hate because the American auto industry was suffering a severe economic downturn. Plus there was growing resentment towards Asian Americans as a whole because of the rapidly growing immigration from East Asia, South Asia, and Southeast Asia into the United States. Many escaping war-torn Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos. Asians were again being scapegoated for the massive job losses and rise in bankruptcies due to the U.S. economy being in a deep recession in the early 80s. Later that year, my brother, walking in Washington, D.C., was catcalled by a construction worker who yelled at him, Go back from where you came from. Sound familiar to what is happening today? History repeating itself. Thankfully, time has softened my own trauma. As I grow older, my memory is not as sharp, which is in some perverse way good. And God has transformed me to accept that the egregious act of one individual does not mean I can blame an entire group as the same. And God is inviting me to see that trauma can become an opportunity for spiritual growth. And that opportunity is for any one of us to take. Growth that allows one to answer God's call to help others to heal. Verse 21 to 23 says, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. We are told Jesus is sending his disciples, apparently on some sort of mission. And to empower them, to prepare them for the work, he took a page out of the creation story 
by breathing the Holy Spirit into the disciples as God breathed life into man. As followers of Jesus, we are given the Holy Spirit, who is our guide, our counselor, our helper, who gives us peace to overcome the fear and anxiety from trauma in our lives. And with that peace, we can step into a hurtful world. And, and, and why is Jesus sending us out? Simply said, to spread the good news of Jesus to the traumatized in the world. The story of those who have suffered trauma is Jesus' story. And Jesus' story is our story. Jesus knows us and he understands us because Jesus is the ultimate wounded healer. To be Christ-like, we are to be wounded healers too. In verse 23, Jesus told the disciples, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now, this is an interesting command by Jesus. Does Jesus mean literally that we have the power to forgive sins? I don't think so. Only God has that authority and power. What Jesus meant here is that his followers have the responsibility to share the good news of Jesus to others. Only then will people have the chance to come to Jesus for forgiveness. If we are not obedient to reach out, which we can be prone to, when we are wallowing in our own miseries and pain, unreached people cannot know how they can receive forgiveness and healing from their suffering if we don't act. And when we have experienced trauma ourselves, our trauma gives us common ground with others who suffer trauma. We are not better, but we have something in common that connects us relationally. Dealing with our trauma grows us with the Holy Spirit's help in compassion for others. And we definitely must have sufficient empathy to lovingly serve others in the name of Jesus. My big idea this morning is that God has a purpose for people on the other side of trauma. My hope is that, that this would be encouragement for everyone listening. I want to pause for a moment to address something to those who are hurting terribly right now. Maybe you are angry and bitter, disappointed in people who have hurt you deeply. Circumstances and relationships have not been in your favor. For some, it is not just trust in people, but also trust in God that has been damaged. You are not in any state ready to help others who are hurting because your own pain is still too great. The wounds are still open and fresh. That's okay. God wants you to take the necessary time to heal. He knows your suffering and he loves you enough to walk alongside you. I've been there myself and God patiently waited for me. And when I was ready, I heard a gentle, gentle whisper that God has a purpose for people on the other side of trauma. And I am grateful that this God-given purpose is exemplified here at CLC when we partner with others in serving the less fortunate that are often traumatized. Like with Freely and Hope, who serves girls and women who have suffered sexual violence in Kenya and other parts of Africa. Or City Team Ministries, SF and Oakland, helping many who are in recovery groups and trying to get their lives back in order to re-enter society. Or First Press Berkeley, feeding hot meals to the homeless and under-resourced. Turning Point Women's Shelter, where our home groups are cooking meals once a month for the women, many who are single moms and have suffered abuse or human trafficking. Or TJ Mexico, building shelters for migrant people in, in transition. And our own eye screening, which provided free eye care to homeless and the working poor in neighborhoods that are primarily immigrant and people of color who can't afford health insurance. I can keep on going, like orphanages in Naga, India, 
from local college campus ministries to globally sending our lead pastor overseas to the mission field. But why do this? Why should we help others, especially if we are in pain ourselves? Let me tell you how my eyes were opened. Years ago, at a, a um, leadership retreat, one of our members, Colin Tomakawa, in a varsity Christian fellowship, taught from Isaiah 58. During an inductive Bible study, I had one of those aha moments. From Isaiah 58, I heard God say, your healing comes as a result of helping others to heal. Seems like a paradox that when we are damaged and of need of healing ourselves, that God says, go and help others to heal. If we can get our wounded selves to serve others, God's word promises in Isaiah 58, verse 8, then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. As Jesus is the wounded healer, so are we to be also. When experiencing trauma, first find safe refuge, and then embark on a healing process with Jesus to get to a place where one can embrace that trauma changes one's life forever. And hopefully, we let God use us as wounded people, others who have been wounded like us. Don't let PTSD defeat you because God has a purpose on the other side of trauma. Let me close now with a prayer for us that is based on Isaiah 58, verses 6 to 9. May this prayer be a blessing and a call to action for us individually and as a church. Church, receive this blessing with eyes wide open. May we loose the bonds of wickedness to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke, to share our bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into our house. When we see the naked, to cover him and not to hide ourselves from our own flesh. Then shall our light break forth like the dawn and our healing shall spring up speedily. Our righteousness shall go before us. The glory of the Lord shall be our rear guard. Then we shall call and the Lord will answer, we shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Calvin, for that powerful message. Um, church, we're going to continue to respond with one more song of worship. And I invite you to just continue reflecting upon um, his uh, Pastor Calvin's words. And I do hope and pray that CLC could be that safe refuge for you. Um, if you're going through um, trauma and pain and suffering, we, we're we here for you. Um, and we want to invite you to, you know, come into these spaces. And um, if you have needs, if you have prayer requests, if you have anything that you want to be sharing with us. We have people in our church who love so well and would love to talk with you, connect with you, support you in any way. But most importantly, um, what we know, it's not that we have all the answers, is that we know the one who does. And so we invite you to come to the fountain of life that we find in Jesus Christ, our hope.
washed away in the waves of his mercy his deep cries out to deep we sing come Lord Jesus come come Lord Jesus come and all who are thirsty Dip your heart in the stream of life. Let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of his mercy. His deep cries out to deep. We sing. would you receive this benediction may the lord bless and keep you may he grant you strength to live through troubled times may he fill you with grace and his peace which surpasses all understanding may he grant you with the wisdom and the will to do justice to love mercy and to walk humbly with him and may he surround you with his love and lead you in the paths of everlasting life in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for joining us once again this Sunday. A few quick announcements before we close. Um, we do have our virtual social hall happening right after service. The ID and the password should pop up any moment now. And the link should also be in the chat for easier access. But we'd love to connect with you. We'd love to see your faces and maybe continue chatting about um, thoughts that you had from the message and if you do um, 
have things that you want to share that you want to pray with someone about um, you can make your way to the social hall i'm sure we would love to pray for you there but we also have prayer ministers available every single day of the week and so if you have those requests those needs don't be shy just email prayer at christianlayman.org and someone from the team will contact you give you a phone call this week um Another announcement is basic youth. We have service today at 12 p.m. So grab a quick lunch, grab your laptops, and we'll see you online on Zoom at 12 p.m. And last but not least, if you have your tithes or offerings, um, please make those online at christianlayman.org slash give. And it's all up there. It's pretty easy to use. So um, make your way there. Other than that, that's all we have planned for this Sunday. Uh, thanks again for joining us. We'll see you same time, same place next week. Have a great week.